The Dallas Stars suffered a heartbreaking loss on Saturday afternoon at the hands of the Tampa Bay Lightning. And on today's episode, we go inside the Stars locker room and hear some post-game thoughts from Luke Glendening, Scott Wedgwood, and Marion Studenich. And we try to decipher why things are okay, even though the result of Saturday's game was not. All of this and more coming up on today's episode of Locked On Stars. Your Locked On Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked On Stars podcast, the only daily podcast covering the Dallas Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Dane Lewis, your local expert on all things Dallas Stars hockey, coming to you on this Monday, February 13th. And this episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more and visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started and whether this is your first time here or you are a recurring listener thank you for stopping by and making locked on stars your first listen of the day be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're watching on youtube you can also follow us on your favorite podcasting platform we are free and available no matter where or how you choose to listen Uh, and it was a good week last week for the dallas stars that just ended in heartbreak Uh, And, you know, it's a tough game, a tough opponent, the Tampa Bay Lightning, who have been doing a little bit better as of late. They started off their first game back from the All-Star break, getting blown out by the uh, the Florida Panthers, their in-state rival. Then they lose the next night in overtime to the Sharks. But then they bounce back in a big way, pick up a 5-0 shootout over the Colorado Avalanche. So they had a little bit of momentum coming into this game on Saturday. The Stars had some momentum themselves. There's a clash of the Titans. Definitely felt a little bit like a postseason matchup, and it's kind of what you've come to expect uh, at this point with these two teams that have good goaltending, but also are pretty top-heavy with some of the best talent in the NHL at at some respective positions. Uh, Guys like Haskinen and Hedman have been some of the best defensemen over the past few seasons. Nikita Kucherov, Jason Robertson, Steven Stamkos, Rope Hintz. I mean, uh, just an onslaught uh, of some really good teams, really good players. Uh, on the ice, and it was on full display on Saturday, and the Stars uh, certainly had their opportunities to win this game. Really felt like it was destined to go to overtime, which I personally would not have necessarily liked the Stars' chances, but given the result that we got, I I would have taken an overtime loss in a heartbeat because that means the Stars at least pick up a point, but instead they, they allow a goal with less than, you know, a minute left in the game. Uh, and then, you know, the score looks, makes it look a little bit worse than it actually was three to one uh, makes it seem like there was a little bit more breathing room for the lightning. They literally scored that third goal with zero seconds left on the clock. And so the stars, I think overall played a very good game. They certainly could have been better in the last five minutes, but you know, the, the other 55 minutes in the game, the opportunities were there. They just ran into uh, the best goalie in the world. Andre Vasilevsky, his numbers might not show it, but, He's still one of, if not the, the best goalie in the NHL this season and has been for quite some time. And Scott Wedgwood even mentioned that after the game. He said besides Jake Ottinger, he thinks Vasilevsky is the best in the world. And so you have to give a ton of credit to him and a ton of credit for the Lightning finding a way to uh, to score that goal in the last 50 seconds of the game or so. But let's go ahead and now and, and go inside the Dallas Stars locker room. Here's some post-game audio from Stars forward Luke Glendinning. Then we'll also get some thoughts from head coach Pete DeBoer and, and everything he had to say about his team's performance on Saturday afternoon. Yeah, um, I mean, we were right there uh, to at least get a point. Um, I mean, Wedgie was outstanding. Um, I thought for, for most of the game, we played really well. Um, it's a tough way to go. You know, this time of year, um, we got to keep getting better, um, keep raising our level, and uh, it's a good test for us. Um, you know, and I thought we rose to the occasion today pretty well. I mean, their pressure kept coming. Um, they did a nice job, but, uh, you know, we needed to probably have a little more composure with the puck, and, um, you know, we were hemmed in, and um, eventually it's going to break. Just looking at the face-offs, you were good today. It just seems like as a team, you guys have done a great job. Is that something that worked out in 
practice? Is it the fact you guys have a lefty and a righty on a lot of lines? Uh, yeah, I think having a lefty and a righty is, uh, is obviously pretty nice. Um, you know, we do work at it in practice. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's a luxury, I think, when you have, have both. Um, but, uh, you know, just keep working. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't like how we handled the last, you know, probably five minutes for sure. I mean, they pushed in the third. That's what a, a real good team like that does. Um, and then, you know, I thought our execution the last five minutes was poor. We, we kind of, uh, it's a good learning lesson for our group, you know, against teams like that. You can't, uh, you can't sit in a shell. You can't stand around because, uh, you know, they'll expose you. And so we'll look at it and get better from it. Well, we did a lot of good stuff. I mean, you know, let's be honest. I mean, we could have we scored three or four goals at least, right? So, um, you know, I guess that's the lessons in it. You, you know, you've got to finish and build up. We had an opportunity to put that team, you know, in a hole a few times, one nothing, 2-1. Um, you know, probably could have even gone to 3-1 at different points with opportunities. And either execution or Vasilevsky made the save or we passed up shots. You know, I, I thought uh, uh, we didn't give Wedgie enough support offensively, even though, and we had enough chances to do that, I think. So our execution's got to get better on that end and uh, power play. Um, yeah, and you, you know, like I said, you let a good team like that hang around by not sticking pucks in the net when you get looks. Um, things like that happen. Pete DeBoer said it well. The Stars just did not give Scott Wedgwood the support that he needed. We'll touch a little bit on Wedgie here in a few minutes, but that, that's really kind of w where this game lies. The Stars had their looks. They got 29 shots on goal, the Lightning 31. Uh, the faceoff percentage was nearly 50-50. The Stars 51% as opposed to Tampa's 49. But really where I think the Stars ha are going to have the most regret or where they might grimace the most uh, pondering on this game is the power play. They had four opportunities on the man advantage, and they executed on none of them. Again, you have to give some credit to Andre Vasilevsky, who played very well. And also the Tampa penalty kill was playing very, very efficiently on a Saturday. They even generated a few rush opportunities, and it looked like at some points might have scored a shorthanded goal. And really, the Stars just have not been great on the power play, even a little bit before the All-Star break. But especially uh, since coming back, it has not been much to look at. And hopefully that's something that will work itself out because early on in the season, it was one of the best power plays in the NHL. And there's a huge reason why the Stars were winning so many games and winning them to the degree that they were winning. And they were winning by several goals and, you know, dominating teams. And a huge part of that was executing on the man advantage. And they just haven't done that recently. And I, I feel like that's maybe the difference here in this game. You bury one or two of those power play looks. And I think this game has a little bit of a different result. And it likely ends with the Stars coming away with two points rather than coming away empty-handed. And just a, a brutal game all around. I mean, the Stars did a pretty good job of keeping the, the Tampa Star players in check. They keep Kucherov uh, off the board. They keep Stamkos off the board. Anthony Sorelli getting two goals and then also getting an assist on Brandon Hagel's empty net goal. And just some food for thought with, with uh, the Chicago Blackhawks being in circulation with the Dallas Stars potentially uh, shopping Patrick Kane. Just just take notes from last season. Brandon Hagel was on the, the Chicago Blackhawks. Tampa makes a move for him. He's a pretty good player for them down the stretch. And in the postseason, having a great year this season, 22 goals for Brandon Hagel. He also has an assist on Sorelli's first goal. And the Blackhawks are kind of in a similar situation with a guy like Max Domi up for grabs. Only a $3 million cap hit, 35 points so far this season. Just some food for thought. If you're going to go after a player from the Blackhawks, maybe go out and get a guy like Max Domi. I'm not going to say he's going to put up the same numbers as Brandon Hagel, but I think that there's a lot less risk involved, and you could still uh, get a pretty darn good player out of that deal. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about Scott Wedgwood, and we'll hear from the Stars' backup goalie as well his thoughts on his performance and, and where the team stands after this heartbreaking loss against the Lightning. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by our friends at Athletic Greens and their product, AG1. With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, your recovery, focus, and aging. 
Tons of people take some kind of multivitamin, and it's important to choose one with high quality ingredients that your body will actually absorb. AG1 is a small micro habit with big benefits. It's one thing you can do every single day to take great care of yourself. And right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day, and that's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Thank you again for making Lockdown Stars your first listen of the day. Segment two on this Monday episode, uh, recording on Saturday afternoon after the game so I could enjoy the Super Bowl a little bit and enjoy my Sunday evening. Uh, hopefully, uh, I'm right on this, but I think the Kansas City Chiefs are going to win the Super Bowl. So this is my prediction there, even though you're hearing this after uh, the Super Bowl, but still plenty to talk about on today's episode reflecting on Saturday's heartbreaking loss at the hands of the Tampa Bay Lightning. And, and it was in, in no fault to the Stars goaltending. Scott Wedgwood comes in in relief. Pretty pretty surprising, uh, if you ask me, and even talking with a few other people in the media in the press box during the game, saying that they also were a little bit shocked for this decision, uh, given just where the Stars are at in terms of their schedule. Jake Ottinger played two really good games on Monday and Wednesday, and wins against the Ducks and the Wild. And then they have two days off. They have Thursday and Friday off. And so you think, okay, maybe Jake Ottinger comes in because not only are there two days off before, but there's two days off after. The Stars not playing a game again until uh, tomorrow, Tuesday night, against the Boston Bruins. So it's not necessarily a, a matter of you know overworking or at least the schedule being overwhelming. I, I think it's just, hey, Scott hasn't played in quite some time. I believe the last time we saw him, was in Los Angeles when he was very, very sharp and got that shutout win against the Kings. So I can understand the reason for wanting to put Wedgwood in, and obviously uh, I think things went pretty well. I don't think it was a bad decision at all, just a little bit shocking. Uh, but now I, I imagine we're going to be getting a, a very well-rested Jake Ottinger on Tuesday night against the Bruins, which will be very important. But Scott Wedgwood comes in in a situation that is certainly not an easy one. Uh, playing against a Tampa Bay team that's been very solid offensively for the past several years. And he came in uh, and gave an excellent performance. And, and, you know, the Stars lost. It's very, very hard to pin on him, although I'm sure that there were several people that tried because, let's face it, uh, that last goal, I, I mean, it, or yeah, the second goal, really, uh, the one that gave Tampa the win, it, it wasn't necessarily the best look. But if you go back and watch that play, I just don't really know what Scott could have done because if he he commits very, very hard to Hedman coming down the ice, but I think you have to do that. Uh, if he doesn't commit that hard, Hedman gets a shot off and maybe it goes in and maybe maybe Scott did overcommit a little bit, but Hedman also props to him for making that play of using his reach and getting the puck around and then uh, Sorelli able to get his stick in there before Scott can get back to being kind of in the middle of the crease. So uh, he played so well. Yes, that's an unfortunate sequence of events, but it's hard to pin the loss on Scott Wedgwood because it's a two-way street. The Stars also were not getting really any, any other goals, and especially at that point in the game, the Lightning just had way too much sustained pressure in the offensive zone for, for themselves, and, and the Stars were just kind of back on their heels defensively and, and not really doing Scott Wedgwood many favors at that juncture in the game. But I thought he gave an incredible performance, and he gave the team a chance to come away with a win or at least get a point out of the game but let's go ahead now and go back inside the stars locker room and hear from number 41 himself scott wedgwood and his thoughts on his performance and just his role this year as a backup goalie yeah it reminds me of pittsburgh a little bit kind of the same thing you know two strong teams going at it till pretty much the last what was like 50 60 seconds last minute there um no but a good game i mean to help the goalie score on over there and you know, he did a good job and just uh What's it like kind of dueling with a guy like Vasilevsky? Fun. I mean, obviously, he's probably, I mean, I think he's the best in the league and next to my boy Jakey. But, uh, you know, he's uh, he's been good. I've played with him. I've been on his team, you know, saw what he did for the, the cup runs there to be a part of it. Uh, he's a workhorse. He just takes up a lot of that and, and knows what works for him. So, uh, 
you know, obviously to go toe to toe with him. Uh, you know, I think I've done it twice now, but uh, you know, he's a good dude. I like him a lot, so it's fun to battle. But obviously, I like to be on the other side of it. What happened there on the last sequence? How did how did you read that? I uh, just I mean to you know play above the the scrum and Hedman's coming down. I kind of force him wide. He got outside my post to kind of trap him, and he you know he's got a big reach. So once he got around the net, he threw it in front, and before I could kind of come back in, there was a bunch of sticks there, and somebody tapped it in before I could get my knee down. Yeah, I thought he did a good job. I mean, uh, obviously I've kind of been stuck in a few situations where it's. Uh, a you know, longer period of time between games, and you know, my head was on. I felt like I played a very strong game and, and gave the guys a chance to win a hockey game, and that's kind of my role, and I thought I did that pretty well. You're just kind of making sure you got all their options kind of covered, keeping your head kind of loose on a swivel, making sure that, you know they got uh, a lot of guys like to sit off net and, and sit in one-timer spots, so knowing what hand they are, where they are, it's kind of you know play within yourself. Don't try and move too much or be too aggressive in certain situations, and obviously trust your teammates. We got a lot of good, good defensive coverage in our end, and you know we did, uh, we did a really good job of it. We've talked about it before, but I think it's worth repeating that Scott Wedgwood is is in a very difficult spot in terms of just his standing with the team this season. Obviously, uh, the coaches like him. The team really seems to like him. The fans seem to like him as well. And I think he's a very good goalie, but he's backing up one of the best in the NHL. He's backing up a guy who I think is top five. And, you know, we just talked about it earlier and you heard him say it. I mean, he, he knows that Vasilevsky and Ottinger are some of the best goalies in the National Hockey League, but Wedgwood continues to come in and more often than not plays a very solid game and puts the Stars in a, in a position to, to come away victorious. And that's really all you can ask for. And I think he did that on Saturday. Uh, and if the Stars somehow won, I, I think it would have been a huge testament to him and the work that he put in. Still really good work on Saturday afternoon for number 41, saving 28 of 30 shots. And I'm, I'm sure we'll see him again relatively soon because the stars do have a back-to-back -back coming up next week or at the end of this week rather with a game in minnesota and then coming back to dallas on saturday for a matchup with the columbus blue jackets so maybe we see jake ottinger get the start in his home state in minnesota like we did with the stars previous trip up there and then maybe we see scott wedgwood back in between the pipes against a less than explosive columbus blue jackets team on that saturday that's at least how i would draw it up but you got to take care of the Boston Bruins on Tuesday first, where, again, I'm 99.9% .9 sure that 29 is going to get the nod in that matchup. Well, we're going to take one more quick break, and when we come back, we'll talk about and hear from Marion Studenich, the newest player from the AHL to get called up this season, not making his NHL debut, but his first appearance with the Stars in the 22-23 campaign. We'll get some thoughts from number 43 on the Stars right after this. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. The midway point of the NBA season is here, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Because new customers get a no-sweat-first bet up to $1,000, and that's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app because it's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drained. The Dallas Mavericks are on fire right now. They add Kyrie Irving to a lineup that already features Luka Doncic. If you want to bet on the Dallas Mavericks or anything else NBA related, you can do so with FanDuel. They even let you combine your bets for a chance at bigger payouts with a same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 and bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. Again, that's fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA and the Locked On Stars podcast. Closing out this Monday episode of Locked On Stars, thanks again for tuning in and being with us today. We got to see a second game with Marion Studenich at the NHL level. Obviously, Yoel Kiviranta has been out with a lower body injury. And so the newest player to come up from the AHL Texas Stars has been a, a familiar face. Marion Studenich was picked up by the Stars off waivers last season. He played the majority of, of this time of year with the team uh, and, and was a pretty nice addition. Not a, a huge uh, stat sheet stuffer, but a guy who played with a good burst of speed and seemed to bring some good energy on the ice. And so far through two appearances with the Dallas Stars this season, 
that seems to be the case again. It's been really fun to watch Marion Studenich out there. He's had some grade A opportunities at scoring a goal. He's almost kind of like Denis Gurionov in that way that he has that nice burst of speed. And that's a really valuable weapon to have with a guy like him. Uh, and he's not necessarily the same player as Kiviranta, but he fits in pretty well uh, in the bottom six and, and seems to be you know enjoying his opportunity and enjoying his time again here in Dallas. And I think he's making some plays that show that he he might be worth you know holding on to wh whether it's this season or in the future as well to kind of be a, a depth forward a guy that you can play on the third or fourth line every single night and still get some solid production from him we didn't get to talk to him on wednesday after the win over the minnesota wild but we got to talk to marion student each after the game on saturday so let's go ahead and hear some of his thoughts on his first couple of games in the nhl this season right now Oh yeah, definitely. You know, it's a, it's always better to play more games. So you always feel a little bit better and better. So yeah. It looked like you're able to now use your speed a little bit more. We talked about it before with more control. Is that something that you feel has improved from last season to this year? Yeah, definitely. You know, I just want to use it because I know it's my strength. And uh, you know, some games you have an opportunity to use it. Some games you know you don't really do. But uh, like when I get a puck, I just want to use it because so uh, it's my, it's my strength. Is it easier a little bit for you this year playing with the speed that these guys play at a little bit faster than, than how they played in the past couple of years? Uh, I mean, like, uh, yeah, definitely. Like everybody can skate in this league, so so yeah, it's a uh, it's a uh, easier easier for me to you know when you have uh, two guys who skate. Gary is so fast too, and Glenn too. So I think we can uh, yeah we build on on it. What's the challenge for you coming up? I mean, you, you get come right into two pretty intense games and another one with Boston. How do you get to up to that high NHL level? You know, I just, you know, I've been here last year, so so I'm just trying to don't think too much and uh, just go and just go shift by shift and uh, try to do my best on the ice, and uh, that's it. Is it a learning experience for how to finish once you do use your speed to get to the goal and then how to finish it with a shot? Yeah, definitely. You, you know, like sometimes, sometimes the the D is trying to, and also he just wants to stop you. And uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I I go to the situation, so I want to score. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll see. Student each is the most recent addition, and what's been a pretty steady of steady line of good talent coming from the AHL. Texas Stars having a great season down in Cedar Park, and so. It's not really a surprise that a lot of their players have their games translate over to the NHL uh, quite nicely. We've seen several different players come up and play some pretty solid minutes with this team. Student each is the newest addition there. Although if Kiviranta does come back healthy, would not be surprised to see him reinserted back into the lineup full time. But Student each, a guy that I've been excited to see all season because I, I liked what I saw from him last year with the speed. And again, he's still a relatively young player, still relatively new to the NHL. So still growing his game a little bit. And the NHL is always going to be different than the AHL. But he's been a pretty effective goal scorer. I believe 14 goals uh, this season with the Texas Stars in the AHL. So he, he certainly can turn on that offense when he needs to. But it's, of course, always going to be a little bit harder because you're not playing against the Andre Vasilevskis of the world down in the AHL. But a, a nice player, and as, as long as we're going to have Yoel Kiviranta out, I think Studenich will be a very good fit for this team. And, and I, I really see no problem with him sticking around as long as it takes Kiwi to get back to being 100%. But that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Stars. Thank you again for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube or the follow button on your favorite podcasting platform. Uh, we're free and available no matter where or how you choose to listen. You can also follow us on social media at Locked on Stars on both Instagram and Twitter, as well as my personal Twitter account at Dane double underscore Lewis. But be sure to tune back in here tomorrow. We'll have a full game preview for you of what could be one of the biggest games of the NHL season, a potential uh, Stanley Cup Finals preview, the Dallas Stars welcoming the Boston Bruins into town, the best team in the NHL. Should be an exciting game, and we'll get you caught up on everything you need to know on tomorrow's episode. But I hope you guys enjoy your Monday. Have a good one. We'll see you back here tomorrow. <laughs>